Long before the days of Machado, Soto, and Tatis, the late 2000s Padres were the team to forget when thinking of baseball. From 2007 to 2010, they missed the playoffs every year with an average winning percentage of 48 and would continue to miss the playoffs every year until 2020. As a San Diego native, it felt like every team that was rolled out in those days featured guys past their prime like Mike Piazza, who posted a 283, 342, and 501 slash line in 2006, and Greg Maddox, who posted a 407 ERA in 60 games and 351 in her third innings, and young talent that probably didn't belong in the big leagues or just hadn't been paid yet. The Padres acquired a whopping seven players from the Rule 5 draft from 2007 to 2012, most of which were returned to their original team shortly after. In the same time, the Twins selected Ryan Presley and the Mariners selected R.A. Dickey. Nice picks, nice picks. One of the only bright spots on the team was Adrian Gonzalez, who posted a 288, 374, and 514 slash line with 161 home runs in five years with the team, and was one of the only reasons to come to home games. He posted an electric bat, and as a San Diego native himself, was more than loved by any locals paying attention to the team. Adrian Gonzalez was one of my favorite players growing up, but he seems to be one of the best players easily overlooked during his era. After a few years of not retiring, but not being picked up, up by any team, what happened to him and where is he at now? To see how good of a player he was, we need to go back a little. Alright, all right, not, not that far. Adrian Gonzalez was born in San Diego but spent eight years just over the border living in TJ before coming back to San Diego. My high school coach even played against him in travel ball and described how the outfield fences were lined with scouts just for him. They liked what they saw because he was taken number one overall by the Marlins in the 2000 MLB draft. He would spend two and a half years with the team posting a 283, 353, and 427 slash line across rookie, A, double A, and triple A without even reaching the majors before being traded to the Rangers alongside Will Smith. No, not that Will Smith. Or that one. Or even that one. Yeah, that one. For this guy, he finally got a taste of the big leagues in a Rangers uniform for a total of 59 games across two years before being traded again to the San Diego Padres, where he would finally find a footing in the majors. Agon posted a plus bat and featured gold glove defense alongside it to become one of the premier first basemen in all of baseball. He received MVP votes in all but one of the years he was in San Diego, while winning two gold gloves and making the All-Star game three times. Adrian Gonzalez brought life to a team that would still be looking for relevance a decade after he left and did more than his hometown team could ever ask for him. But like any good young Padres player at the time, when it came time to pay him, it meant time to pack your bags and leave town. The Padres would end up trading Agon before the 2011 season to the Boston Red Sox for a handful of players, the most notable being Anthony Rizzo. Adrian Gonzalez would sign a seven-year, $154 million contract with the Red Sox and continue where he left off in San Diego. He only got better in his time on the East Coast as he posted a slash line of 321, 382, and 514, and in 2011 represented the American League in the All-Star Game and the Home Run Derby now completing the feat for both leagues. With just 27 games left in the season, the Red Sox would be leading the AL East by a game and a half with a record of 83 and 52. But then with the playoffs just around the corner, the team would experience one of the worst collapses in recent memory, going on to have a record of seven and 20 in the month of September, finishing the season 90 and 72, losing the division lead by seven games and missing out on the playoffs entirely. But Gonzalez being a man of faith, I pride myself and think of myself as a a man of faith said i'm a firm believer that god has a plan and it wasn't in his plan for us to move forward after the season he claimed this was the hardest season on his body saying we play too many night games on getaway days and get into places at four in the morning this has been the toughest season physically because of that after the red sox failed to be in postseason contention in the middle of a 69 and 93 season he would be traded to the dodgers just one and a half years into his seven-year contract. The Red Sox would be dumping over a quarter billion dollars in salary onto the Dodgers, while LA began their aggressive kidnapping of the NL West for what would help win them 10 of the next 11 division titles. 
While the Dodgers failed to make the postseason after acquiring Gonzalez for half a season, they haven't missed the postseason since. In his first three seasons with the Dodgers, he would post a 281, 342, and 475 slash line while hitting 77 home runs. He even had an OPS plus of 129 during these first three seasons. He was one of the best players on already great teams that saw them continue their dominance year after year. He would receive a gold glove and a silver slugger in 2014 before making his sole all-star appearance for the Dodgers in 2015. 2016 would be his last season as a full-time starter as the eventual Rookie of the Year Cody Bellinger would split time with him at first base in 2017. One of the biggest questions many fans had during the 2017 season was where was he during the World Series? The answer is in Italy, on vacation with his family. While he did finish the season injured and didn't expect to be healthy by that time, it was a surprise to many that he wouldn't even be on the same side of the globe while his team competed for the World championship. But the Dodgers GM did clear the air saying he's taking time with his family. I think guys totally understand that. The Dodgers would go on to lose the 2017 World Series with nothing suspicious going on whatsoever. Absolutely nothing. Over the following offseason, he would be traded again to the Braves for former teammate Matt Kemp. They released him immediately. The Mets signed Adrian Gonzalez for league minimum before the 2018 season in the hopes that he would help mentor Dominic Smith as their first baseman of the future. He appeared in just 54 games, posting a slash line of 237, 299, and 373. His final game was June 10th, going over 3 against the Yankees before they released him on June 11th, 2018. This would be his last stint in the major leagues. He would end his career hitting 287, 358, and 485 for an OPS of 8. 843 and an OPS plus of 129 while generating 43.5 war. He earned four gold gloves and two silver sluggers in his career while being named to five all-star teams. In every full season he played, he posted at least an OPS plus of 111 while having a positive glove. Although he last appeared in 2018, he wouldn't announce his official retirement until February 5th, 2022, after he played 43 games in the Mexican League, posting 340, 412, and 531 showing he could still play at a high level. Outside the MLB, he played for the Mexican national team in the 2006, 2009, 2013, and 2017 WBCs and represented them in the 2020 Olympics. While Adrian Gonzalez is remembered by most fans in the era he played in, I think many forget just how much he meant to the city of San Diego while he was in his prime. Wherever Gonzalez is today, I hope he's safe.